my title is Knowing the Term. In the Old Testament, there was a tribe of men. In the Old Testament, there was a tribe of men called Son of Isasha. The Son of Isasha, they had certain understanding of time. Say Amen. No one could understand time like them. Who were famous for understanding? Imagine. They know your tribe in understanding time. They could explain time. They could know time. They would describe time more than any person in the world. Those tribe of Isasha. With a knowledge, they had a knowledge of what Israel should do in those times. They will know that. They will tell Israel people, this is the moment. This time like this, we need to do this. They will study time. They had understanding, they had knowledge to discover time. Those tribe of Isasha. Say amen. When you read in 1 Chronicle 12, verses 32. Before we go on, let me clarify. Let's go to uh, uh, 1 Chronicle 12, verses 32. The Bible says, Of, oh man, you can read all the story, but I just want you to know it. They say, Of the tribe of Isasha, Men who understood the time, take not the time, my problem is that the time, which with knowledge of what Israel should do to understand chief and all the relative were at their command. These people have that gift of understanding time. They will tell the nation what to do at that time and what to do to this relative, what is happening. They had this gift. But let me go uh, in the Bible, meaning by time. The ancient Greek had two words. The ancient Greek, not the Greek. The ancient Greek had two words on my research. That, that time they are talking is Kronos and Kairos. Say amen. They were Kronos and Kairos when the mean time. Are you with me? The Greek word Kronos is where we get our English word chronological. Are you with me? Referring to a clock and calendar. Say amen. So these people could know the clock, the time very well. They could know the date very well and calendar. Are you with me? They could know this thing very well. The clock and calendar, when we chrono, they know all of this thing in the Greek word. It used, this chrono, it used 54 times in the New Testament. And at this time, that can be measured in a second, minute, hour, and year chrono. Say amen. I was talking about this time, it's, it's two times. This word, in the Greek word, ancient Greek word, it's kairos and chrono. But when we talk about chrono, it's about time, minutes, and years. You know what I'm talking about. These people could be professional to read this. So the Greek words, kairos, is used, this kairo now. Kairo is a little bit different to the chrono. Kairo is used 86 times in the New Testament. And it is quality, no, it is qualitative, it's equal to this. I can say that. It measures moment. Kairos is about moment. Right moment. Are you with me? It measures moment, the right moment, or an opportune moment, and the perfect moment. When we talk about Cairo, we see about the, it measures the moment, the right moment, the opportune moment, the perfect moment. Such Cairo time happen when divine favor say amen when we talk about Cairo, Cairo time it's when the divine favor meets divine opportunity they are often the result of the sovereignty of God transcending the free will of man when we talk about Cairo it's where supernatural things happen on the moment where you by yourself you never even know you will understand that that way uh, prayer differ. 
You may pray to know the to know the chrono. Say amen. You may pray to know the time. But I may pray to know the moment. Say amen. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking to you. Some people pray to know the time. But some people pray to know the Cairo, the, the, the supernatural moment. You will discover that we walk in this world, we are different. Some people pray because they want to know what time it will happen. When, but this one is praying about no only time, he's praying about the moment. I'm praying according to, I want to measure the moment, I want to know the right moment, I want to know the opportune moment and the perfect moment. Because this, it can guide divine favor. Say amen. And this will help you to know if what you are receiving is it for God or it, can, it have come to the right moment. Otherwise, the devil may provide you something temporary. Say amen. In that way, we are in a different direction, a different understanding of doctrine. When I study this thing, to know why these people they were very professional and famous to know the time. Why they were gifted to know the time? Because that, that was helping them. Say amen. But the Cairo moment, it is a moment and time that appear in the moment of Jesus Christ. Only few people could know the moment and supernatural moment. Because Jesus Christ come as a supernatural person in a moment where people could not expect it. That why he could ask people question. Who do you think I am? Some people, they were still waiting for another Messiah. But they never know the Cairo time. They know the time of chrono. They could be professional in reading watch and calendar. But they could not professional to know the Cairo, the supernatural calendar of God. Say amen. That way we are different. No matter how we come and we know God, we are different. As I told you, people may read Bible and they carry Bible, but they're not, they're not qualified by God. Say amen. There's certain things we need to come to a knowledge of it. And we know people that we need to suffer and do the same thing like the people when they receive Jesus, but they never know. Look at the wise men. They could read the star and they know that this kind of thing can happen only when a king is born. Say amen. But other people, they could not know it. That's why people could not know the time of Jesus. That because it's a Cairo time. It's a supernatural. It's a favorite time that people could not discover it. And when we are in a favorite time and we don't know, we are dumb. We lost it. We are not people who walk by time the way it is. But we are people who walk by this moment, favor of God. We need to, we need to know when the favor of God is coming and when it's, there's not a supernatural. Are you with me? I repeat again, such as Cairo time happen when divine favor meet divine opportunity. So divine favor must meet also divine opportunity for that thing to be permanent. They are often the result of sovereignty of God transcending the free will of a man. Meaning, God doesn't go by what you want. He go by what he wants. Better than even what you have been looking for. There are many people today, we don't know even what you are looking for. We measure ourselves to certain things. But what God is planning for you is greater than what you are, you, you are looking for. Are you with me? Because we are out of that Cairo time that we measure ourselves to our family where we come from. But what God is thinking about you is too much. And you don't limit yourself. You make yourself available. And you know how to articulate your tongue and to ask God this moment to know the time, to know when it's coming, to feel it and to understand it. Say amen. Like now, people must should mind so much to discover this time we call Cairo, this moment, opportune moment of next year, to know that what will happen for me in May, what will happen, God must reveal to you something that is happening for you next year. 
Are you with me? And there are three things of ten mark the divine Cairo, the divine uh, moment, the divine favor, the divine opportune. Three things there is in that epoch. There is acceleration. What mark this moment, this time? When you call divine Cairo, divine time, there is three things that mark it. You can see it that there is a supernatural. Say amen. One thing between this time. You know, what I'm telling you now, if you have brain, you have a Christian, you will understand what I'm talking to you. I mean, there is three things that can show you this moment when it's happened. There is what we call acceleration. You realize that things that were supposed to take two years to happen, that thing will take two months. What people have fight to get for five years, you you get it in five months. Say amen. You you notice that there's a, there's an acceleration. Say amen. There's a supernatural favor. There is acceleration. There is unusual occurrence. There is a new, the second one is unusual occurrence. And the third one is a supernatural intervention. When you see these three things, there is acceleration. There is unusual occurrence. There is supernatural intervention. You must know that you are in a time of Cairo. That time of favor. Things that you are supposed to find after five years or things that you have already lost, you lose it. Are you with me? And God come up and pick you up. Start establishing you in a moment where other people are struggling to reach that level you are. Things are happening. That's the moment we call the Cairo time. And when you have discernment to know that I'm in a time of Cairo, you don't make mistake to lose it. Say amen. Because the devil can make you in a mistake. You lost your mind. And you don't find yourself in the right time, right moment, right place for that opportunity to take place. Say amen. And I know this supernatural favor, many people even prophets, even men of God, sometimes they lost that discernment. Am I making myself clear? Let me give you an example of acceleration. Things that will normally take years happen suddenly. A great illustration of Cairo acceleration took place in a rebuilding of the hall around Jerusalem. Recount it in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, the whole were turned down for 114 years. Do you hear that? This wall was turned down, broken down for 114 years. And the Jew tried to rebuild it, to rebuild them for 17 years, seven, 72 years. But what the Jew could not do in a 72 years, Nehemiah did it in 52 days. Can you understand that? Nehemiah do it in 52 days. Furthermore, he accomplished the seemingly impossible task with the same people who had fell for 72 years. You can see it in Nehemiah 1, chapter 1 up to chapter 6. You read that story you realize that Nehemiah was under the Cairo time. The same people failed to do it in 72 years, but he do it in 52 days. Supernatural. Say amen. Supernatural favor. That is what we call acceleration that makes this thing to see. An unusual occurrence, an example is this. Things happen that seems outside the nature of God, or unusual for the epoch season. The story of dead of Ananias and Sapphira, say amen, is a perfect example of unusual divine 
Cairo occurrence. In the early church, the couple lied to the apostle about the price they had sold the piece of land for. And immediately, listen, God took their life because of liar. Say amen. God transcended his, he transcended his new covenant. I mean, God went above his covenant. Say amen. Uh, I hope you are listening to me. God transcended his covenant. Grace, remember there's grace. Are you with me? He went above that to kill them. He transcended grace and mercy. Where, where was the mercy of God at that moment? Including the message of loving his enemy. Is it God who tells us we need to love our enemy? Say amen. Ah, this is what you have to know about Cairo time. When God is in his speed, you want to delay him. He will forget it. He will just transcend his covenant and his messenger of loving and mercy just to clean you so that it's time that you have made to take place. That's why we who know Jesus Christ, we know God very well, we fear him the most. Say amen. That's why we fear him the most because we know that everything is possible with God. When he wants to do what he wants to do, who are you to stop him? Say amen. These people, they were selling their own plot. But because of this, as I told you, I tell you, because of the unusual occurrence, occurrences, they went in a wrong moment where there were no mercy, there were no grace. Say amen. There were no message of loving. You have to do what you have to do. Say amen. The only way at that moment in the first church is to give all your good and your tithes at that moment. There were no message because the church of God, the kingdom of God was supposed to go four hours. And who are you to come and lie to God and tell him that, look, they were thinking they were lying a man of God. But God was in the, in the business. Oh yeah. You don't understand what I'm talking to you. Are you missing what I'm talking to you? People that were thinking they were lying. A man of God. But not knowing that God was in that business. Be careful. In every business God evolved, he can do anything for his business to prosper. Because you, you must put in your mind, your mind, God never fell, huh? Do you know God never fell? Uh, God never fell. He cannot accept failure. Failure is not his portion. Now the business was that everyone in that church must bring his part of land and you sell it. It's not yours because the God. You sell it, you bring the money there. Now the, the, the pastor was supposed to share the money and uh, take the tithe, give the poor also, and give you a portion. These people never know that God was in that business. They were copying the other one who loved God so much. They want to bring the rubbish game. Not knowing that they were playing with death penalty. The certain business God established in his kingdom, it can cost life. Say amen. Say amen. God business, we need to fear it so much. That's why we need that all time discernment to know, ah, is God involved in this business or God is not involved in this business? Are you with me? So that's what I call unusual occurrence. And you can read it in um, Acts 5, 1, chapter 1, up to 11, and chapter, up to chapter 11. Now, an example of supernatural intervention. Things that never happen suddenly occur against ridiculous odd. One of the best illustrations of this is the wild, wild story of Joshua pursuing the Amorites in a battle. Joshua was pursuing the Amorites in a battle. 
the momentum of the battle had shifted in a Joshua favor. But it was getting dark and he needed more time to crush his enemy. Listen, did you understand what I'm talking? That's what I'm saying, Cairo time. <laughs> Are you with me? Joshua was fighting. Now he comes to the moment that he needed more time to, to finish his enemy because darkness was taking place. Say amen. Say amen. So he called out to the Lord. You, you see, that's a business. That business of Joshua, you understand? The favor was on the side of Joshua. Say amen. Sometimes we fight people, we don't know that this man, the favor is on, 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 on his own side. Are you with me? You may start fighting somebody. You don't know that this guy is under the favor of God. You will die or you will lose everything that you have been looking for. It means like you are praying in vain. Say amen. So Joshua need to look for a favor. He knew that God was on his favor. But now, so he called it out to the Lord and asked him to cause the sun and the moon to stand still. And they did. Ultimately, the extra light gave Joshua the advantage he needed to win the battle. That's what we call supernatural intervention. Say amen. Supernatural intervention. This is why human beings today, by the lack of knowledge, not knowing how God operates, we do all what we want with God. But when the consequence comes, Say amen. When the consequence comes, people start crying. Men of God. Men of God. Let me talk to you. When you mess up with a man of God, you can go anywhere you're looking for another man of God. Who's going to answer you? Huh? I want to talk to you. Who's going to answer you? Sometimes, we don't know what we are doing. We are doing in life. We may have a long life. God has given us a long life, but we shorten our life because of our mouth. Say amen. I'm talking to you truth. People they don't, they don't understand. Sometimes we have a long life. Sometimes we have a, a, a future that is it's gonna prosper. Say amen. Sometimes miracles are waiting for us there. What I call Cairo time. Is waiting for you in the corner there. Favor. But because of our mouth, because of our pride, because of thinking that we know too much, say amen. Because we think that uh, we have the same favor, and uh, we can talk about that one, we can talk about this one. Not knowing that the one who you are touching he is untouchable. When tomorrow calamity come, what happened? You never know that the favor was on the side of this man. Say amen. If God can do that even to his own men of God, prophets, if God can do that even to any person, who are you? When God wants to do business, flow is that business of God. We never know the Cairo time. We know the chrono time. And most of Christians in this generation, we walk by the chrono time. We don't walk by Cairo time. We are very far from that. It's only those who are mature, they flow from these supernatural things. And unusually, things happen. Say amen. Say amen. I want to give you a small example. We live in the day out of a, a Cairo time and chrono condition, watching to the clock and planning around our calendar. Most of us here, we are out. We keep planning to our calendar. 
And we think that we are the same. Uh -uh. How can we be the same? Remember me and you. We were in Peru. When I was talking to you about this kind of sickness where we never greet each other. We were in the same time. No, I'm asking a question. We were dancing, me and you. We can dance the same. But in the timing, be careful. I repeat again, be careful, my brother. Be careful. Hmm? When it was December, last December, it was, I was here now. People come crowd here for miracle, for blessing. Are you with me? They were in a time of death and blessing. Say amen. Most of you are celebrating Christmas. Are you not in a time of death and calendar? You are out of the divine nature of God. Now, I look, it was here. I said to you, people of God, you must be, you must have a spirit of uh, Caleb. People listen to me, amen. And some people, when I was preaching, they, they were waiting only me to lie hand up on them. When I start lying up on them, oh, oh. when it comes to water, oh, you are drinking water without knowing what you are drinking. What is going to happen to me? Am I thinking, am I taking the message? The message was very important. I said, look, I am seeing a giant. No matter challenge, you need the spirit of her. Caleb. God said, I pray that I find you with faith. He pray he find you with faith. Are you with me? In time we are living now, I even talk about this since uh, December. I keep telling you that December, you need to fight. Because December, January, ah uh, no, distraction. You will be the same if you know you are in distraction. Say amen. You need a vision from God. A genuine vision from God. Everyone say God, 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 but to receive a vision from him and things to happen, ah, ah. Look, how could I see the giant? I told you about the giant, look now. I told you about Jan. Look now, it's December. We are hundred people. We were in the booking. We come back in the booking. And uh, yesterday, when we were talking about the overnight, huh, the spirit of God come up on me. He said that overnight must take place, but no overnight. There must be a service. You must pray for people from. Around, they will give you the prayer by no Monday. For around uh, seven or five, we start maybe five or four. You must do those service. Let people be there so you can pray for them. And Stefan, take those oil I give you. Everyone will be there. Give him a, a gift of oil. That's why I must not anymore give the oil. I must give it free to people. Those will be there. Say amen. And God tell me, after that prayer, you lined up on people. You go back home. <laughs> Look, you are joking. You go back home. And at midnight, go online. Pray for everyone who will be online, even people overseas. Why? God mean his own business. Who am I to say, oh, at least let me relax. Let me pray for people here. Pa, 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 and I go home and I sit in my house and I relax. But God is still telling me I must pray for people at midnight and I'll be online. Are you with me? Because I know how God reacts and how capable he is. Let it go down. The challenge is this, is that if we are spiritual ignorant and uh, and uh, are unaware of the change in weather, which call divine Cairo condition, then we can end up like Balaam. I know you know Balaam. Who demonstrates that 
a smart uh, uh, donkey is better than a dumb prophet. Say amen. <laughs> Have you taken that? Can I repeat that again? I said it. The challenge is that if we are spiritual ignorant and unaware of the change in the weather, which I call divine Cairo condition, then we can end up like Balaam, who demonstrated that a smite a uh, chakas or donkey is better than a dumb prophet. King Balak wanted to hire Balaam, the prophet, to curse the Israel so he could wipe them out. Balaam ride his donkey. By the way, the story was like this. When the king Balak, this man, called upon Balaam and sent his first messenger, go and tell Balaam the prophet. He realized that the Israelites surround him and they were great. He could not finish them or challenge them. And they were very strong. Now he sent some messenger to go and see another prophet to come and curse them. Remember, the Bible talked that a prophet has the power to curse you and to bless you. Because whatever he says, it will happen. So even Elijah killed some, Elisha, he killed some children just like that. Now, the first prophet, the first messenger they went to Balaam, they talked to him that Balak wants you, whatever, whatever. He says, sleep here. You can read the story all. Look, you can read all the story in um, number 22, but you must read all. But I'm going on 21, 28, 20, 30, 35. But now the story, I'm, I'm just making it a brief. Now what happened? This king, these people, they went to talk to Balak. Balak said to them, Balaam said to them, you sleep here, let me ask God. He asked for God. When he asked for God, God said to him, you must not go and curse my, my people. Favor is on them. Don't accept this. Stay here. Balaam prophet, stay. Say amen. He wake up morning and tell them that go and tell your king that I'm not coming. When they go back, Balak send now the greater people, wealthy people, who can impress Balaam. That's why Stephan is very tough when it comes to money. Say amen. So, when they come back again to him, they say, no, the king say he will honor you. Go and read the story. The king say he will honor you. They even say the king say he will honor you. I read it. <laughs> I love this story. And they say to him, and they say, for he will give you in uh, 17, he will give you a, a very great honor and uh, he will do whatever you tell him. So please come, curse the people of Israel. Balaam answered, look now Balaam, they take him people because they give him honor. They ask him to give him money. They tell him they will give him everything. Now Balaam said this in uh, 18. Balaam answered, the first one he refused and the second one, God have already said to him, when God says something, don't go back and re-ask him. You'll have problem. Oh. Now what happened here? And Balaam answered him in 18, said to the servant of Balak, even if Balak were to give me his house, full of silver and gold, I could not do anything, either small or great, contrary to the command of the Lord, my God. Now, please, you also stay away tonight, and uh, I will find out what else the Lord will say. He, he tell them to sleep again. God come to Balaam. Listen now, God. God come to Balaam at night. It's always at night. Say, it's always at night. And say to him, if the men have come to call you, get up and go with them. God have changed. He tell them, go with them. Did you hear that? But what plan behind it? He said, go with them. But you shall still do only what I tell you. What is meaning there? You can go because you want to honor. But you don't curse my people. Say amen. Because God knew that he's got power God has given him power. Oh, no, 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 no. We tell you, we don't have only power to cast them, but we have even power to control them. Say amen. 
So he said, no, go, but you shall not do what. But when he tell him go, waiting to kill him. God was waiting to kill Balaam in the spirit. Say amen. He was planning to kill him. Because he never listened. He's greedy. Say amen. But God answered kindly. Because he was going. He was, because he was going. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way. As an adversary against him. Do you know? God bring an angel against Balaam. He said go. Because he, he was seduced. You ask him too much question. Why can't you listen when God say once? You keep listening because they send you another people because of honor. Now, that is 22. But let's go to 23. Now, he was riding on his donkey and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel, listen now. The donkey, you as a prophet. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> My people, if you don't know to pray, ask Shefa. You as a prophet. Look at today. Human being, you human being. Instead of running behind the donkey, who can see before a prophet? But you, you run behind who? This small, small prophet you see here. When they are prophet, you are there. Prophet, you are here. Prophet, but God is telling you here. Some prophets are blind. They don't know the Cairo time. Say amen. When supernatural is taking place, some of us, men of God, sometimes we are blind. What are they want? And I pray for it. Say amen. Because of money, because of famous. Are you with me? Sometimes we run because of what? We want uh, money and uh, we become blind. Totally. We become blind, totally blind. Balaam was blind. Now I bring you back to what I tell you. Don't, don't always Apostle Stefan, Apostle Stefan. No. How can you know this moment I'm blind? And this moment I'm seeing. How can you know? Sometimes you are a donkey. You are the one who may see. Say amen. Say amen. Now the donkey see the angel. go fast. Balaam, the prophet, they call him to go and cut the Israel. So, he could wipe them out. Balaam riding a donkey on the road to his uh, demise. Suddenly, encountered an angel of the Lord with a sword draw, ready to kill him. You can read that in uh, number 22, 21 up to 20, 35. The damn prophet was so spiritual blind. Say amen. I repeat again, the damn prophet who was supposed to cast other people was so spiritual blind that he did not even see the angel. But the donkey saw him and refused to go forward. Balaam beat the jackal three times. He wiped the jackal three times. Some people may wipe you, although you are seeing. Some people may talk about you, although you are seeing. They're still blind. Say amen. But I'm hit the donkey three times. The donkey was feeling pain, huh? Do you think it's only you who can feel pain? The donkey was feeling pain. But the donkey saw him and refused to go forward. Balaam beat the, the, the donkey three times until the animal defiantly lay down. The donkey go down. He said, ah, why must I go? I see the angel. The donkey could understand. This is an angel of uh, God. But the one who the king was relying to, he was blind. Look at the way God can nullify you. What human being relied to, 
What human being they put hope? Apostle must come. Apostle, why can't you wait for God? The apostle you are waiting. Apostle, apostle. Maybe apostle may be blind. The one who will do for you is only God. This king relied too much in a Balaam. And God said to Balaam, don't go. Balaam said, uh, God, there are other people come and look for me. God said, eh? so because they tell you they will promote you, ask me a question. Why can't you answer them the same answer? Because they tell they will honor you. Okay, go, but don't cast my people. God was telling me what? Okay, because you like to go. Now they put, they rely on you. You become on my place, God. Eh? Me, I'll tell you, you don't understand. But you want to resist, you keep asking me because they promote you. They say they will give you great things. Now you ask me a question again. When somebody have answered you, why don't, why you answer, you ask him again a question? You think you change? God never change. He said, go. He said, ah, angel, sherry, go and wait for him. Hit him here. Let him die. So I want to see this person who you rely to. Now the donkey was coming. The donkey was so spiritual than a prophet. Say amen. Say amen. The donkey never lose his spirituality. The donkey eyes was open. But the eyes of a prophet was blind by honor that they were saying. Uh, by the way, they don't, we, we, prophet, we don't see every moment, every time. Say amen. We, we don't see every time. If, if we see every time, we become God now. That way, when the prophet cannot see, you can see. He's not only relying on him. Men of God, men of God, men of God. Especially human beings today. We always, men of God, Apostle Stefan. Apostle Stefan. Any small thing, please, Apostle, pray for me. Can't you pray? You send the SMS. Okay, if now you are sending me SMS now, Apostle, can you, I'm in the toilet. No, you see? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Huh? We rely on a human being instead of relying on a God. If any man come here, is popular, they tell you this man is doing this. You will go, you think that that person, no. You run quickly. You go there. But how many prophets, how many men of God you have seen not change? Huh? How many men of God you have seen not change? Why? Because we don't know the time. Say amen. We don't know about the Cairo supernatural time of God. We don't function on that. We function on physical. When somebody comes, you say, my time has come. Is it he, is he him your time? Or is Jesus Christ your time? When Jesus Christ is in your life, everything comes together on the right moment, right time, and nobody can stop it. By the way, you will never even force it. It will enter itself supernaturally. Say amen. And the Bible says, the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. Imagine. The donkey's eyes was open long time ago. Say amen. But, now the donkey cried. The donkey refused. Now he was innocent. The prophet is beating them. The blind prophet is beating a donkey. Not knowing that the time is very bad now. There's a supernatural intervention. Say amen. <laughs> you never know the Cairo time of supernatural intervention. God wants to defend his people for Israel. The prophet was not in a time anymore. He was out of time. He was in a time of clock. That's why he's eating now the donkey to run quickly. Are you with me? By the time of supernatural, he was out. The donkey said, no, 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 no. He hit. God realized that. No, 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 no. The donkey is innocent. God opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said, the donkey said to Balaam, what have I done to you? Because the donkey believed that I am carrying a prophet. But that moment he was blind. The donkey understanding for him that Balaam could see. Say amen. 
And that's what is happening to you. When you come to church, for you, apostle understand everything. Not knowing that it's only you, you know your problem. Me, I don't know it. <laughs> and if you don't pray very well, you, <laughs> you keep asking, you keep thinking apostle will find my problem. Ah, who tell you that? Are you getting my message? Even if you don't need it, I don't care. God has called me to preach you and to tell the truth. You must come out of that flesh desire and flesh direction. Say amen. Pastor must touch me. When a pastor is touching this one, you are not comfortable. Hey. No, believe that God maybe touch you better than a pastor. You see? The donkey believed that the Balaam is a prophet. Even though the donkey could not speak. But he knew that I'm carrying a prophet because, look, they say, you, I don't understand. I don't, you see? Now, the donkey speak. God is God. The Bible says he's not another prophet. God opened the mouth of the God opened the mouth of the donkey. And he said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have to strike me these three times? He asked a question. Imagine you, an animal asking you a question, a prophet. <laughs> Mr. Fan, at that moment, I'm in Anjambiyoji. <laughs> ah, la. I will run. A donkey talking to me. It's a blue Say amen. Because I'm used to hear the voice of Holy Ghost and the voice of human being. Now a donkey questioning me. Why have, you, have I done to you for you to beat me three times? I will be frightened to the moment that I don't understand it. But for me to stand there, it will be a problem. I will run. I tell you my position. I will run. Because this donkey was with uh, Balaam for a long time. Are you with me? And how come we start talking? And uh, he said, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life to this day? Did you hear that? He asked him second question. And the third one, he said, have I ever been accustomed to do so to you? <laughs> Balaam must be a, a witch to stand there. I am telling you, this question, an animal asks you this question. You must be abnormal. Now, and Balaam was angry and he struck the donkey the third time with this, and the Lord opened the mouth of them. What have I done to you? Then Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a monk a mockery of me. Do you hear that? Balaam, he take that cheeky to answer also the donkey. He created a conversation. This man is very stubborn, eh? because he wants honor and money. Do you hear that? He's very stubborn. If there, there had been a sword in my hand, I would have killed you by now. But not knowing that, the, 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 the angel had a sword in his hand. Say amen. Look at why this guy is talking. Then the donkey said to Balaam, I am not your donkey on which you have uh, uh, ridden all your life until all day. Have I ever, he asked the same question. Then the Lord, now the Lord hear that conversation. Verse 31. The Lord could see that this man, he have lost his mind because of honor. Then the Lord opened Balaam eyes. Say amen. Repeat with me. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. Okay. Let us wait there. But Balak was calling Balaam to do what? to curse. But Balak, Balak forget that the one who gives all of this power is who? Is Balaam or oh, eye was open? Huh? 
So why are you patronizing prophets everywhere? Every prophet you see, you patronize them. Who tell you they can see 24-7? I'm giving you a preaching. Who tell they can see 24-7? If they could see 24 then Bala, Balaam was supposed to see 24-7. But the one who was seeing on the place of Balaam is a donkey. And many of these small, small prophets you are following here, the time you go and see them, the one who could see you is a cat and dog. But them, they don't see you, they lie to you. Amen. Only if God opened them, huh? Even me, I've been here, I've tried my best. To ask God to, to open my eyes. He will open me when I don't even ask him, when I don't know. I will just see, ah, see, ah, sister, I see this and this. Then I, I want to see again. That map, that boat is closed. I continue walking myself. I will hear only the voice. The sea is going. Because God, the Bible said it, he is in control. Say amen. God knows the number of your year. Am I right? The Bible says God knows your problem better than yourself. Am I, you? Am I right? They say wherever you are, God is seeing you. He's with you. Are you with me? So me too, if I can be also 24-7, seeing, seeing, I become what? And who said that I cannot share my glory? Now, let me tell you, in a sing to see, that is where the glory of God is. And nobody can remain there 24-7. Who are you? To see what God must see. Some of the things God sees, you don't have to see it. That's why he said, only what I reveal you is yours. And what I don't reveal you, remain mine. Who says so? And how can he allow you to see everything? Then you know everything now. Hmm? Then you know everything. Even the Bible said, God talked to us in a, not in a parable. He revealed us half, half. He tell you, he will reveal you something. Are you with me? Ah. In French, he said, ah. he said, he will give us some. Another one is he, it is. Are you with me? He will never come there and say, wow. You can see everyone in Cape Town. Who are you? You, you have been born from sin? No, man. Even Jesus Christ, how come you people are like that? Sometimes I don't understand you, eh? Jesus Christ, a woman touched Jesus Christ. I keep demonstrating you the Bible. Somebody, a woman touched Jesus Christ. Jesus never recognized even his, his name. Say amen. Uh, I'm giving you this, you keep quiet. Jesus said, somebody, anonymous, somebody touched me. But Jesus was the son of God. Am I right? That is it. He said, somebody touched me. The other one said, uh, what do you think? He said, somebody touched me. But the person was there. Huh? As a Jesus, he could say, wait, let me demonstrate. Because he, was, he had a challenge with his disciple. The disciple said, no, nobody touched you. Jesus could prove them. Because he must have proved now. He was going to say, okay, let me show you somebody. You lady, you touch me. Say amen. Uh, but he said, somebody touch me. Uh. But if we have this prophet of today, we have today. They will never say, somebody touch me. Uh. They will never pretend to be stupid. We, the people of today, we don't pretend to be stupid. We want to be like we know every... We don't want challenge. If somebody touch you, feel power, you say, wait, wait, somebody touch me. Hallelujah. You start looking. Ah. Wait, wait. When the, the disciple said, no man, who touch you? You hear, robo sondo, ba, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You start looking for somebody. You see? The way we impress people. Do you see? But Jesus was very calm. He said, somebody touch me. They say, nobody touch me. He said, no, 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 somebody touch me. And he make it clear. He never say, I see. He say, I feel the power. Say amen. The, the option that he could only know that the power was gone and somebody touched him, not to see, but I feel the coming out. And the lady say, it's me. And Jesus say, may God bless you. Your faith have saved you. You have to wait until the person says, it is a, 
me. I hope you are getting this message. It will let it will help you that you never be misled. Say amen. You can be misled by magician, by fortune teller. Say amen. Then this man, then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and uh, he saw the angel. Now Balaam saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his draw saw in his hand, and uh, he bowed his head and lie himself face down. And then the end of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey? Did you hear that? Why have you struck your donkey this three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you because your behavior was obstinate and contrary to me. The donkey so, me and I turn it away from me this three times. If she had not turned it away from me, I would have certainly killed you now and let her live. Did you hear that? If me, I was Balaam, the time the angel is talking, I would talk again to the angel, to the donkey. Donkey, forgive me, forgive me. Until the donkey say, I forgive you. Say amen. May God bless you. Let me pray for you. Dear Lord Jesus, as I was talking about the time, and a long time ago you revealed about, revealed us this time, and we are surviving because of that knowledge, of that power you put us in to know the Cairo time. That's why we come to you, Lord, and thank you for making us always available and ready, well prepared to the moment we are facing. Father, I come to say thank you for everything that you have been doing. Your support, Lord. Your supernatural, divine power. You know everything that will be the way it is today. And you prepare another way to make us stand. It makes me to be confident on your word. You say, seek before the kingdom of God. And the rest shall be given to you. Father, words is not enough for me to say. And all your people, as we're standing here, what we can say, Lord, take control of our heart. We give you our heart, completely our heart. Father, I stand here to pray for those who are sick, those who are fat, those who are facing challenge. Reveal to them the time and rescue them. Almighty God, El Jamuab, Elohim Bashamayim, the Lord of glory, who fight for us even the battle that we cannot see. Almighty God, you open the eyes of a donkey to see supernatural. A donkey who was not baptized. A donkey who never fasts. A donkey who know you only or a donkey who was not created by your own image, but he could see the supernatural. And a way who were created by your own image and a purpose to save you. Father, I want to see more than a donkey. And I pray for my daughter, my sister, my son to see also more than a donkey. And to be always alert when there's a danger in front. That way I love you, King of Glory. Let everyone who's connected now and who's present to receive that spiritual sight of seeing the supernatural and to discern the moment and time 
to move according to your direction. I pray for those who are far. I pray for Jimmy, Angel. Let the side be open. Lord of glory. I'm praying for everyone in America. I pray for Portia. I pray for everyone in Paris. Those who are connected and those who are not connected, let the preaching enter you even in your dream. Lord, manifest yourself in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, Amen.